All right, so what I was showing was we had just finished our cut edge duotone color with our white highlights, with our full bleed inking, right? And then I duplicated all the cut edge and made a soft edge duotone layer. And with those, I'm using filter and Gaussian blur. And we really wanna see the difference, right? I'm really softening the cut, the what was cut edge and really clean, I'm softening to these gradients now. Now the highlights are up above, they're still clean and I can soften those too. But I, I like something about that. Now here's the problem with softening your colors. If I turn off my vector, You'll see that when you Gaussian blur it, it starts to bleed it into the outside as well, beyond your lines. So this is the easy solution for that. I turn on my vector. I use my magic wand with contiguous turned on and select the outside shapes within the vector. In fact, I'm gonna use the one that I kind of closed off. Select all the outside shapes and then go in and select these undercuts, like the shape inside the R and the shape inside the O. And it still seemed to sneak into here. Let me see. There we go. That's the one. So then get inside the R, get inside the O. And this is why I said you don't always have to worry about coloring inside the line so much, because then I can take that selection, move it to my, my soft edged color layers, and then delete from it. So this is just deleting the edges away from my duotone shadow layer and from my duotone highlight layer. And that cuts them out, cuts them out nice and cleanly. And it actually gives me what could be a really cool outline besides black for, for some of it. And I'll show you that option. Okay, so now I have to decide how much do I want to be um, soft edge and how much do I want to be cut edge. And I can have them both turned on. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the color now a little bit more complicated. And we're going to shift into what's called full spectrum color. Where instead of it just being lighter and dark blue, I'm going to have warmer and cooler blues affected. So going from duotone soft edge to full spectrum is simply the difference between having only yellows here with black and white added and having oranges and greens and purples and things as part of your, your color. So that is called full spectrum. That's something else you can play with. Now the way I like to play with it is I'm gonna take my cut edge duotone layer, that whole folder, and I'm gonna sh uh, shift its, shift its shadows. Under adjustment, I'm gonna go to color balance and I'm going to shift the shadows to the cool side, to the cyans, greens, and blues. And let's shift it a little bit in the midtones and even shift it a little bit in the highlights. All right, so it's looking more moody and depressed now. You see that? And what that did is it shifted some of those pinks to purples, just in my duotones, in my cut edge layer. Now my duotone highlights, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna do image adjustment, color balance, shift to the warms, towards reds, magentas, and yellows in the midtones, towards reds, magentas, and yellows in the shadows, even though there aren't gonna be a lot of shadows, and then most importantly, towards yellows, reds, and magentas in the highlights. So what, is, what does that do? Just very subtle because this is just on the, the cut edge layer underneath. 
it shifts those a little bit brighter. Okay. And now I'm going to go up to my soft edge and I'm going to reverse those. So I'm going to go to color balance. I'm going to Actually, let's not do color balance. Let's push it even further if I really want to go full spectrum. Let's go to hue saturation. And on my soft edge, I'm going to actually play with the hue. So I can make this into a psychedelic illustration very easily. Very easy to make a, um, a GIF animation scrolling through different hue selections on just your soft edge. It's like a lava lamp. So I just don't, I don't want to push them too far. These are the highlights. So if anything, I want to warm them up a little bit. So I'm going to push them in this direction. Maybe brighten them up. Desaturate them a little bit. probably pushing them a little too far. Let's go back closer to the middle. All right, I kind of liked it though. Going more yellow. The yellows and greens. Yeah, I like it, but it's a little much. So I'm going to duplicate the duotone cut edge highlights, move that up into my soft edge highlights and Gaussian blur it again. So it's soft edged. Oh, where are all those coming? Let's see. So if I think it's too much, what I can do is just take a big swath of it from my flat color and duplicate that up and move that up into my soft edged. There we go. And then blur that out with Gaussian blur. That helps. Yeah, so I like some of those variations. And now um, I'm going to Select the outside here with contiguous turned on and get inside the, the R again and inside the O, even though I don't think it got down there. And delete that away when I just made. Okay. Now what else do I have to play with? The duotone shadows. I kind of think I want to leave those where they are. So now I can play with the different opacities for each of these. And even layer style effects. So for instance, if I make my darker layers multiply, then they'll darken even more. Right, which can be pretty extreme. Or I could try things like overlay to like extend the contrast, or pin light, or soft light. Or just keep it normal. But if I want to give it some texture, I can set it to dissolve. And that's a way to take this very flat, this is a very helpful pro tip when you're using digital coloring. It's a way to take this very flat digital color and give it this variation. 
that professional work has. The problem with the dissolve is that even though it prints this way, which is really nice, on the computer screen, it, it gets these Moria effects that look really broken up from a distance. But from up close, that's kind of how it works. So often what I'll do is I'll make a duplicate that's dissolved, and then I'll put it on top, and then I will do what's called um, rasterizing in the layer style. So a way you can do that is to set it to normal, you know, the copy of what you want to try dissolve on. Open your layer styles, cover the whole thing with like a gradient overlay. And I would just do something, usually I would do something like cool to warm, something extreme, but at a low opacity. Yeah, it looks kind of nice. And then set that to dissolve. And then what you can do is rasterize the layer style. So it's a normal layer, but it has the dissolved filter already built into it. And then if you don't want that to affect your colors, you just want it to give you a texture element, you can set it to be pin light. And then the texture is in there without affecting your colors. So I'm throwing a lot at you. Basically, I just want you to have free license to play with coloring your um, spot illustration. Now, with that, I add my highlights, and it's really starting to come to life. If there are certain ones I want more saturated, like the duotone shadows and that pink, I can go to hue saturation. I can just up that layer, which is kind of fun. I can warm it up a little bit, which could be kind of fun. And if there are colors that are just really bugging you, you can make those adjustments. All right, but I think I'm pretty close here. So now I want to check how this is working on a gray background. And then I want to check how it works on a black background. And so I'm seeing on the black background, it's not that clear yet. So let's add in that stroke effect. And then I'm seeing, I like how some of the cutout white highlights work, but I think they'll work a lot better if I just soften them a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate them, and I'm going to Gaussian blur them while keeping the, the sharp one underneath. So this can be kind of complicated to see. So let's Gaussian blur them a little bit less because I had it at a pretty extreme setting. So let's Gaussian blur them about to there. There we go. All right? So then what you can do is duplicate that, and it will grow them and soften them. And then I can Gaussian blur them a little bit more, and then duplicate that, and it will grow the highlights and soften them. See all those copies? And then I can merge all those copies together. Command E, select them. So now I have these really bold, bright, soft edged highlights. I can soften them one more time. Gaussian blur. Maybe one more time again. <laughs> and then I can set those at a, at a certain layer style. So whether they lighten, which is pretty much what we see right now, whether they screen, um, and then you can set the opacity so that they're not quite as strong. This is another way to kind of deal with duotone highlights. And then I can drop the sharp-edged highlights behind them and take their opacity down. So it's kind of a strong core underneath each highlight. Now there might be some places where I lost color that I'm not happy with. Like in the tongue, I kind of lost a lot of color. 
And so what I might do is go to my flat color layer and then just duplicate that selection and bring it up. 